Hi guys, so I'm here in Posada to Pesca in the Amazon rainforest and I'm going to paint this sea and I'm going to paint the boats in the foreground, some of the reflection of the trees in the water and some of the, the blue sky coming through the clouds. So I think this is quite a nice scene to paint. It's nice and hot, it's warm. I put a lot of sun cream on because uh, this Brazilian sun can burn you quite badly. Um, but anyway, I'm really excited to start painting. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's start painting. I start by sketching the main lines and big shapes of the composition using thinned down raw umber paint. I'm painting directly onto the white gesso surface of my panel. Often when painting, I usually apply an undertoned color known as an imprimatura. However, painting onto a white surface does have its own advantages too. One advantage of painting on a white background is it adds a brightness to your painting. As oil paint is translucent, this lightness tends to shine through the subsequent layers of paint. It also tends to make you paint a higher key image, as your value decisions when applying the paint will be based against this light underlayer. So dark and mid-tones will look especially dark in contrast. For this reason, I don't advise painting directly on a white background if you're painting a dark scene or a chiaroscuro light effect. But today in the Amazon, everything is very bright. Even though it's overcast, I can still feel the scorching heat of the equatorial sun blazing through the clouds and illuminating everything in sight. I'm using a filbert brush to paint the trees and I've mixed two separate greens on my palette, one for the section of trees in light and the other for the trees in shadow. Even though there's variation in the tonal values in this section of trees, I'm careful not to overstate this contrast. I'm grouping the lights and the darks in the mid-tone range of my value composition. As if I squint or flick my eyes around the scene, I can see that the light areas in the trees don't compete with the light areas in the foreground or on the boats. For the section of forest that is in the distance, I'm using a lighter and duller grayed down green mix with less details and value variation. This helps create that sense of depth or atmospheric perspective and separates these trees from the trees in the midground. When painting the water, it's important to remember that the colours in the water are a reflection of the sky and as a result, although similar in hue, they will be slightly darker and not quite as chromatic or saturated as the colours in the sky. Also, as the water gets closer to the foreground and shallower, it takes on more of the local colour of the riverbed underneath. Here I'm starting to paint the boats by defining their contour with this dark greenish brown colour of the surrounding water. So one of the reasons that I was drawn to this scene is it depicts much of what is iconic to the Amazon. The vast green rainforest, the river and also the boats which are a means of transport for the people who live here. In fact, this remote area that I'm staying at can only be accessed by boat unless you want to trek for months through dense, uncharted, tropical rainforest that's swarming with snakes and just about every insect you could think of. There's no roads and no trains or airports nearby. Even many of the bigger towns throughout the Amazon are also only accessible by boat. To paint these boats, I'm first painting the dark and mid-tone values and then layering on the areas that are catching the light most with thicker and lighter paint.
here I'm painting these quite peculiar dead trees which are poking up out of the river. And these bare trees do allow for some exceptional sightings of many of the exotic birds which live in the region. And here I'm painting a parrot on top of one of the more prominent trees. I'm now adding some small silhouettes of parrots flying above the trees. I always think that adding birds into my painting adds a nice touch of visual interest as well as scale to the scene. I also find it adds some narrative and helps capture the Amazon which is famous for its abundance of wildlife, it's the most biodiverse region in the world. And a fun fact about parrots that I've learnt here is that parrots are almost always seen flying in pairs and that's because they find a life partner and then they fly everywhere with them together. So I hope you enjoyed watching that video. It's a really fascinating place to paint. I've seen so much wildlife go past so many different birds. I mean, if you look over there, you can see uh, a herring, I believe, a long, maybe a different name, a stork, or I'm not sure what they call it in Portuguese, but a long necked white bird. I've seen parrots flying in the sky, um, a huge range of birds. Also, I've seen fish uh, in the water as well. Um, I know there is alligators in this lake as well, because last night, I uh, saw a few alligators. But if you enjoyed that video, remember to please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and also subscribe to the channel because it really helps out my channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's a massive help. I'm really trying to grow this channel to be a, a big YouTube channel so I can keep producing more content all the time. And uh, thanks for watching. So I'll see you in the next video, and remember to follow me on Instagram at George Frederick Thomas. See you later.